I started my family clinic a long time ago. Good afternoon. So who cares? Who cares about uh, the selection of polymer-based devices? Why is that important? Well, earlier uh, in the uh, conference here, we heard some talk about uh, the expansive properties of the conventional devices that we use on a daily basis, self-expanding stent grafts, and uh, the fact that we've got pressure from the heart, systolic pressure, plus uh, the self-expanding pressures that are additive and, I would uh, argue, deleterious. And it's not just me arguing. These are, there are plenty of data points here that uh, I think we need to have our own metacognitive ability to judge why is it that we use a particular device. And I no longer think that it's an acceptable reason to say it's because I'm comfortable using the device or that's what I was trained to use. There's plenty of data out there now to support that we should probably be challenging these long-held beliefs and looking at other technologies, new wave technologies. Uh, the numbers I posted here, 20 to 33 percent of patients at two years, 35 to 36 percent at three years, and 59 percent of patients at four years all have uh, enlargement of the inferenal neck at these, at these positions. And if you look at the 10-year uh, data, uh, all of these devices essentially show growth of the aorta up to that oversizing position of these devices. So I think that's the reason why our friends in the Cleveland Clinic do so many of these explants is because they are sitting around for a long time. You saw the graft earlier, and they're doing more and more of these. I, I wonder why. Well, I don't think there's any mystery. Uh, we look at uh, that sweet spot that uh, the IFU asks us to get, about a 20 to, uh, 10 to 20 percent uh, oversizing to get a good fit. Uh, but that's not always uh, easy to achieve. And if you undershoot or overshoot, you're going to have problems. If you really overshoot, then you can see a terrible uh, device migrations and expansion at 24 months. Uh, this is a paper right out of Cleveland Clinic showing how terrible uh, an explant can be on patients. They showed, and this is the best of the best, right, the best in the world, 9% mortality for explants. It's not a benign issue. Um, and I think uh, we know that uh, we can have a nice uh, final completion angiogram and feel real good about ourselves. but. How do you know that that patient isn't coming back years later to somebody else across the street? 77% of these cases that came from another institution. So I don't think there's any argument. The radial force detracts from the proximal seal zone, and therefore I think that's why we're talking about this new age, or polymer age as we call it, um, with uh, the image on the left side being the Nelix, which is uh, investigational in the United States, uh, but the off-the-shelf ovation has been available since late 2012. Uh, essentially, the way these devices work is by uh, essentially insulating uh, the aorta, uh, and in the case of the, ne the uh, uh, ovation, insulating the neck, so that, uh, as I'll show you in, in a bit, uh, it prevents, actually, enlargement of uh, uh, the tissue. This is the Pepsi challenge here, the head-to-head -head comparison between Endurant and the Nelix, five-year follow-up. And essentially what we're seeing here is a shift in the curve to the right with the self-expanding devices where you see uh, a not surprising stability uh, of uh, the device and size of the aorta. Uh, and you can see these slices here also prove that point as well. You see pre-op, post-op, and in three-year, uh, you see the self-expanding stent on the bottom showing an enlargement. Uh, as far as ovation, similar data to support that at the level of the seal zone, you actually have uh, stability or insulating properties with this device. Uh, something, again, that uh, you can see on these curves where self-expanding devices have a progressive enlargement, whereas even in open repair where we suture anastomose the proline uh, to the uh, Gore-Tex or the uh, Dacron or what have you, you see an enlargement in the aorta because of the systolic pressure that affects it. There is no insulation there, whereas uh, at the bottom, the ovation system has that insulation to where you simply don't see that, that growth. And uh, over five years, you see 97% a, a freedom from uh, reintervention for type 1 endoleaks and uh, exceptional results. Freedom from mortality through five years, also exceptional. So in summary, chronic outward force from self-expanding stent graft system combined with blood pressure can and will result in aortic neck dilation. Uh, polymer sealing creates no chronic outward force and insulates the aorta from blood pressure, resulting in a stable neck diameter and no type 1 endoleaks at five years, and no migrations or conversions at five years. Interesting. Thank you. I have a question about patient selection. Um, sure. Uh, you know, the, obviously the Nelix device is a very innovative device, and uh, do, you, um, do you worry at all about patient selection in the sense that, 
because I, and although I have not deployed the device, um, I'm fam quite familiar with it. The idea would be that if, in fact, you get a fa device failure because of trying to push the envelope, perhaps, um, uh, I would see that the repair or trying to fix a proximal end leak could be a real challenge as opposed to a more modular device where you have additional options. Um, do you do you see that as an issue? Do you see that uh, that uh, care with regard to patient selection will be critical to making that device work successfully? You're talking about Nelix. Nelix, yes. Yeah. So I had the uh, uh, opportunity to go to Europe and implant with some of the leading uh, folks over there, and that is a huge problem. Uh, and so it has everything to do with patient selection, as you've implied. You don't uh, simply put this in and push the envelope. Uh, there are cases where uh, you can get tremendous results with uh, uh, the chimneys uh, with those devices, but uh, when you're talking about uh, a potential build-up option, you're looking at coiling that little ridge and, and doing some other things that aren't so elegant looking, and they look hellacious on follow-up CAT scans, and they're hard to follow up. So that is a big problem, and I think you just don't want to put yourself in that position. One of the biggest arguments with Ovation was that you don't have a cuff system either. Uh, and I think that's also a bit of a, uh, a misnomer or, or maybe a confusion where you can put in a balloon expandable palmaz and the anatomy of that particular device, which I won't bore you with, but there is a way to kind of iron out that uh, PTFE collar so that you get uh, more seal that way. Have you, have you had to do that with the Ovation device after the, the polymer has solidified? Have you run into that issue and any solutions for that? The only times I've seen a type 1 endoleak in the Ovation platform is when we've pushed out of the IFU. So like most devices, if you, if you skirt uh, the treetops of IFU-ness, uh, you're probably going to run into trouble. And it's in those times when we've had to go and try to balloon. And uh, it is a malleable polymer after 14 minutes or uh, 30 minutes or so and in which case you should see some improvement. If not, then the palmaz is the next go-to step.